Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, the climate guy setting the record straight about climate. In this video, I show how NOAA and NASA are destroying science by data tampering. In 1947, Time Magazine was pushing global warming. This article from Time Magazine was reprinted in the Minneapolis Star. It was titled, Old Earth is Warming Up. From Time Magazine, Greenland is getting greener and Iceland's ice is shrinking. The Arctic is losing its chill. According to Dr. Hans Allman, professor of geology at Stockholm University, all the cold lands around the northernmost Atlantic are entering a bombier era. Dr. Allman has been collecting evidence from a variety of sources, temperature records, glaciers, trees, fish. In the Scandinavian countries, he says the winters have been getting milder since the 10th century. It's going to be pretty hard for climate alarmists to blame a thousand years of warming on your SUV. Climate experts claim that carbon dioxide is the control knob for climate, but clearly that's not the case. Carbon dioxide didn't vary very much from the 10th century till about 50 years ago. This next paragraph is very interesting. The change for the better amounts to only a degree or two, but that's enough to make all the difference in countries that fringe the Arctic. So in 1947, Time Magazine described global warming and a melting Arctic as being a good thing. Now they call it a bad thing. Then the article went on to discuss glaciers. Mountain glaciers, very sensitive to climatic changes, also support Dr. Allman's theory. In central Norway, Lapland, and Greenland, the glaciers have been drawing back. Some have disappeared entirely. Scientists do not agree on the causes of these fluctuations. One theory, the sun's radiation may vary at different periods. Another, the sun may have drifted through belts of cosmic dust, which kept some of its rays from reaching the circling planets. They couldn't have blamed CO2 because CO2 wasn't really changing. In the heyday of the Vikings before 1300 AD, the populous Republic of Iceland lived largely by agriculture. The Norse raised sheep in Greenland, where no sheep graze today. After 1300, the cold crept down and the Icelanders gave up farming. The Greenlanders were exterminated, perhaps by starvation, perhaps by glacier fleeing Eskimos. Dr. Allman hopes the warm cycle will last for at least a few centuries. This is a very good article. It's much better than any climate articles you'll see written in Time Magazine today, because this article is accurate. What this article shows us is that climate fluctuates a lot even when carbon dioxide isn't changing. CO2 is not the control knob. So in 1947, Time Magazine was pushing global warming. Now let's fast forward to 1974 when they were pushing global cooling and a new ice age. Science, another ice age, Monday, June 24th, 1974. Then the article went on to blame every form of bad weather on global cooling, all the things they now blame on global warming. As they review the bizarre and unpredictable weather pattern of the last several years, a growing number of scientists are beginning to suspect that many seemingly contradictory meteorological fluctuations are actually part of a global climatic upheaval. When meteorologists take an average of temperatures around the globe, they find that the atmosphere has been growing gradually cooler for the past three decades. The trend shows no indication of reversing. Climatological Cassandras are becoming increasingly apprehensive for the weather aberrations they are studying may be the harbinger of a new ice age. Telltale signs are everywhere, from the unexpected persistence and thickness of pack ice in the waters around Iceland to the southward migration of a warmth-loving creature like the armadillo from the Midwest. The mention of increasing ice around Iceland is very important here, because if you remember from the previous article, they said Iceland's ice is shrinking in 1947. But in 1974, Iceland's ice was growing. We are going to be discussing Iceland more later in the video. One more very interesting thing from this article is that they blamed the polar vortex on global cooling. Now scientists blame the same polar vortex on global warming. They blame droughts, floods, famines, disastrous tornadoes on global cooling. Now they blame those exact same things on global warming. So the symptoms of global cooling and global warming appear to be exactly the same. 
So for just a moment, let's indulge our climate scientist friends who want to do geoengineering. Suppose they were successful at cooling down the planet. What would we expect? We would expect droughts, famines, floods, disastrous tornadoes, and the polar vortex. The same weather we have now. And if we go back to the heyday of the Vikings around 1300 AD, the Norse were raising sheep in Greenland. Well, it's too cold for that there now. Climate science is already looking very ridiculous, but it gets much worse, so let's proceed. Fast forward to 2007 and Time Magazine is pushing global warming again. So remembering our timeline, in 1947 Time was pushing global warming, in 1974 they were pushing global cooling and a new ice age, and by 2007 they were pushing global warming again. These dates are important. Now let's look at NASA's temperature data for Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. This is NASA's old untampered version of Reykjavik temperatures. It showed the actual measured thermometer data, not the data which they've tortured with their adjustments. And lo and behold, the temperatures lined up with the Time Magazine articles. In 1947, global warming. In 1974, global cooling. And in 2007, global warming. The Time Magazine articles were pretty accurate. But this presents a huge problem for NASA because it wrecked global warming theory. 1940 was just as warm as 2007. What this shows us is that Arctic temperatures are cyclical and have nothing to do with carbon dioxide. They went up till 1940, down till 1980, and then back up again after 1980. However, if we line up Reykjavik temperatures in blue with the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation in red, that's an ocean circulation pattern, we see almost perfect correlation. So Arctic temperatures are controlled by ocean circulation, not carbon dioxide. This completely destroys NASA's entire global warming story. So what does NASA do about this? Well, quite predictably, they tamper with the data to remove the past warmth. That's their standard operating procedure. And they get their data from NOAA, who does exactly the same thing. The green line shows the actual measured data, which is cyclical and correlates with the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. Whereas the blue line is their tampered data. They needed to make it look like carbon dioxide is driving temperatures, so they cooled the past and made an upwards trend. But the upwards trend doesn't exist. It's no warmer there now than it was in the 1940s. This blue line is fake data. So what NASA and NOAA are doing is essentially destroying science. Scientists should be looking at ocean circulation patterns to understand the cycles of climate. But NASA and NOAA tamper with the data to push their global warming agenda, and thus they make the data not only meaningless, but actually misleading. It's not carbon dioxide driving the climate, it's ocean circulation. They've completely wrecked science. So let's go back to the 1947 article for a minute. This was a very good article. It was very well written and discussed some important things about climate science. But recently, climate scientists have become so corrupted by the billions of dollars in funding coming in, they're just pushing this carbon dioxide agenda, which has nothing to do with it. These people doing the data tampering are committing a crime against science and a crime against humanity. And they're not doing it accidentally. This ClimateGate email showed exactly what they're doing. These top climate scientists were discussing ways to cool down the 1940s. So if we could reduce the ocean blip by, say, 0.15 degrees centigrade, then this would be significant for the global mean, but we still have to explain the land blip. So they wanted to cool things down, but they didn't even have an explanation for it. Then they said it would be good to remove at least part of the 1940s blip, but we're still left with why the blip. What do they mean by good? Wouldn't it be good for science? It'd be good for their funding, but it's terrible for science. It's disastrous for science. In fact, they've destroyed science by doing that. Congress needs to cut off funding to these people. They're not only destroying science, but this science is driving public policy, and it's costing the world trillions of dollars. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.